Welcome to lecture 6.8, Proportional Integral Derivative, or PID, Controller Design. We have designed P, PI, PD controllers, okay? Now we include all three terms in a single PID controller, proportional, integral, and derivative. With this, we can design for both steady state and transient response. A PID controller transfer function will have one pole and two zeros. One zero, zi, and the pole will be specified by an integral compensator. And the other zero, zd, will be specified by a derivative compensator. Our design process will yield a PID controller with the transfer function a gain for the um, proportional controller design that came from the proportional controller design, a gain K2 and a zero location ZD that comes from the uh, derivative compensator, and a gain K3 and a, a, another zero location that comes from the integral compensator. If you combine these together, so this is what emerges from the design process, then you can rewrite this as a proportional gain, an integral gain, and a derivative gain. The design procedure below will yield numbered gains, K1 from the P design, K2 from the D compensation, and K3 from the I compensation. They are related as follows. So in these equations here, numbered um, as such, you can simply use this to uh, derive what Kp, Ki, and Kd are once you've gone through the design process to find K1, K2, and K3. Our design procedure is as follows. 1. Check that the integral compensation of a PID controller is necessary and sufficient to meet the steady state performance criteria. Now. If you want to do a controller design that does not require any integral compensation, then you would skip the integral, right? You would just do a PD controller. Uh, if you have a situation where you need more than one integrator to get the steady state performance that you like, you're going to have to do more than just a PID controller. You'll need another integral uh, compensator. Two. From the transient performance criteria and using the second order approximation, as usual, determine the region of the S plane in which the dominant closed loop poles of the root locus should appear. So as usual, we wanna know where we're aiming for in the uh, uh, S plane for where we want our dominant closed loop poles to lie. And that's primarily determined by the transient response requirements. Step three, design a P-controller and evaluate its transient response performance. Four, apply derivative or decompensation to improve the transient response. Simulate to verify the transient response performance. Of course, frequently the second order approximation will not hold, at least not perfectly, and so we'll need to do uh, a simulation to verify that things are looking okay. Five, apply integral compensation I to improve the steady state error performance. Of course, as usual, when we do an integral compensator, we're trying to avoid affecting the transient response performance as much as possible. So we're trying to not affect the root locus too much. Six, check all performance criteria and adjust gains and zero locations as needed. Seven, determine the gains, proportional, integral, and derivative gains from the equations listed above, um, because usually those are interesting to know. Um, we've come up with gains that have iteratively uh, given us Kp, Ki, and Kd, but we haven't computed them until we've actually used these equations here. So that's what we do at the end. And uh, we will then proceed. I'll, I'll make a new video for the uh, design example. All right, and that is what a PID controller design process will look like for us. There are other design processes, of course, and um, this method will give us what is a very common type of, of controller uh, from classical control theory, the PID controller, and I um, 
can't stress enough how common this type is, how useful it is, how robust it is. Um, and also it's not everything too. So it's good to keep that in mind. There are other situations and other um, types of controllers we might want to design. All right, I'll see you next time.